so let's talk a little bit about red, white, and bloom because I have been besieged is a good word with emails with questions and don't get me I don't mind a bit I, I answer all of them and it's all good because I want you guys to get comfortable with your embroidery machines and I want you guys that have a lot of you have never done this before you've never done it I mean you advanced embroiderers you people that have been doing it a long time y'all look at this pattern and when you first look at it you know, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Imagine if you had no clue about your embroidery machine. It looks overwhelming. But I want you guys to take a, you know, don't be afraid of it. Take a deep breath. It's going to be fine. If you have not yet taken your embroidery machine out of the box and you're going to be doing this, take it out of the box, okay? Take the machine out of the box. Take all the little plastic off and all the wrappers and all that and just set it on the table and just look at it. All right, just look at it. See where the needle is. See how it's all set up. If you've got an embroidery and sewing machine combo, put that embroidery arm on and turn on the machine. If You always want to do that when the machine is off. Whenever you take your embroidery uh, arm and put it on or take it off, you want to do that when the machine is off. Because what, what happens with the machine when when you put the embroidery arm on, as soon as you turn it on, it recognizes, oh, okay, I'm going to be doing this now. Now, some of them don't have a removable embroidery arm, like Darla back here, my Luminaire. It's all in one, but most machines will have, if they're a combo, they'll have a removable embroidery arm. Put that on, turn it on, and just look at it. Get comfortable with it. Poke around on the buttons. You don't have to know what you're doing. This is if you've never messed with this before, or maybe you've only fiddled with it once in the store and you just don't, you know, you don't know. Just poke around on it and see and go, oh, this is that and that's that. And when you come across something, have your manual with you, okay? And when you come across something you don't know what it is, look on the page in your manual. Now, if you have a, if you have a luminaire, there is no manual. You're on your own. No, that's not true. There's an online manual. There's an in, on-board manual, but it's... Eh. It, they're hard to, to navigate. Anyway, I, I'm of the hard copy persuasion myself. I prefer a hard copy. But, you know, I had a, a young lady email me today who's got the PE800. And, yeah, uh, that's, that's an embroidery-only machine. And she's got a lot of questions about this. And, and, I, and I totally get this, that if you've never done this before, you're thinking, holy moly, what have I gotten myself into? Because if you're going to do this red, white, and bloom quilt, this is it here. It's by a company called Kimberbell. And it is an adorable patriotic wall hanging. And we're going to make this quilt. And we're going to start the 26th of April. And it is not a live class. So I'm going to put the videos out on YouTube and you can watch them at your leisure, all right? But let me tell you how this is gonna go for, I mean, when you look at this quilt, it's a wall hanging, it's a 40 by 40 wall hanging. So when you look at this and you see all of this stuff and the book is thick, first of all, the back one third of the book are extra projects. So we're not going to touch those. If you wanna make those later on, and or maybe just make one of those then that's fine too you can do that so don't get intimidated by the thickness of the book I'm gonna walk you through every single baby step this is for beginner embroidery for you to get familiar with your machine and that's the beauty of Kimberbell projects they have got every little thing marked out in the book they tell you when to change your thread they tell you how to do everything also on those parts that are multiples I will be doing one of them on the single needle and I will do the other one on the multi-needle. So you multi-needle users will get some power tools with thread love too. So first of all, in the book, I'm going to show you how we're going to break it down. If you look on page 32 and it talks about sewing the quilt together, it breaks the quilt into sections. So there's section one, here's section two, section three, four, etc. All right, all the way to section seven. And then from there, 
it shows you how to sew the sections together. So here is section one and two, here's three and four, there's five, there's six and seven, and then you sew these sections together and these sections together and then put the whole quilt together. So this is how this goes together. So they break it down into sections and that's how we're going to embroider. We're gonna break it down into sections. Now, some of these, like I said earlier, are duplicates. So where we have one watermelon right here, there's in section one, there's also a watermelon right here in section four, and there's another watermelon right here in section six. So we're not going to do just section one, we'll do section one plus the watermelons for the other two. So you'll actually be working ahead and you'll have homework after we do one, you can do the others. I am going to show you how to do multiples. So I'll do one watermelon on the single needle and then I'll do the other two watermelons in the eight by 12 hoop on the multi needle. And anytime, those of you that have the ability for larger hoops, Go ahead and use multiples in a single hooping if you can. To put all of this together, I'm gonna to be using Embrilliance Embroidery Software. And Embrilliance Software is a third party software. It is not proprietary to any single company except Brighton Leap who makes Embrilliance. And it is a suite of software and I'm only really going to be using Embrilliance Essentials, which is what you need if you are a beginner. And then of course I'll be using Thumbnailer so I can see what I'm after on my desktop. And I'm going to be doing the background quilting. And when I do the background quilting, I want to show you guys, I will be merging designs in Embrilliance. So in a single hooping, I'm gonna bring in the background quilting design and there is a, uh, a list for that. For the background quilting, this particular diagram is on the My Kimberbell site. I will link to it below and it shows you on the quilt. It has each section is numbered, see this? And each numbered section corresponds to the actual design name right here. And it looks like a lot, you guys, but it's really very simple. We'll go through it step by baby step and you'll, you'll get this. After a couple, you'll be like, I, I know what I'm doing. It's not as difficult as it seems. So I will be using Embrilliance Essentials and I've got a link below to Embrilliance Essentials to a video about it. If, you, if you've heard about it, you've got questions, I've got a link on my blog that'll tell you all about it. And there's also links there when you are ready to purchase. And we're gonna create a single design. We'll pull in the background quilting and then we'll pull in the actual design for that particular block on top of that. And then it will all stitch out at once. It will all center on top of each other and you can get them both done in a single hooping. So this is gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna open new doors for you and you're gonna learn concepts that you can use and take with you into your future embroidery projects. It's gonna be really, really cool. I have done some testing. For those of you who are, you know, you're getting your stuff together, I've got all of my bags already, uh, all my fabrics are cut, and they're all placed in their baggies according to the uh, description and diagram that's on page three in the book. Those are the instructions. I went ahead and did that. That's gonna make life a lot easier. I did a bunch of tests. Now I'm gonna go over these again on day one, but I do wanna let you know. In the book, it says recommend but not necessary, and I disagree with this. They would like you to use an optional, this is called a fusible woven. This is a fusible woven that goes on the back of your fabric. It's got little sticky bumps on one side and the other side is not. And this goes on the back of your fabric. You really need to put this on. You put this on in addition to the stabilizer they want you to use in the hoop. So let me show you the difference. Here is a block I did. I was testing. See all the puckers and wrinkles? 
There's no fusible woven on the back of this fabric. You don't want to do that. That's a mess. That's one hot mess. This is what it will look like if you do not use a fusible woven. So if you don't have any yet, you need to get some. You can get Kimberbell fusible wovens online or at your quilt shops. If you don't have any fusible woven and you can't get any fusible woven. So here it is again. I use two stabilizers. The puckers are a lot less. I use two layers of no-show mesh stabilizer. And here it is again with three layers of no-show mesh stabilizer. So if you cannot get fusible woven, because some of you can't, I know, it's impossible sometimes. If that's a problem, go ahead and try multiple layers of your no-show mesh stabilizer and that will help a lot but you do need to test. I would also recommend I'm going to be cutting all of my applique pieces out with the scan and cut. I'll show you on the first watermelon how to do it if you don't have a cutting machine but for those of you with cutting machines I'm using the scan and cut and I am increasing the size of the the cut piece by one click. One seems to do it. Two may be nice, but one click has seemed to be pretty good. Without any increase in size at all on the watermelon piece, it covered it. The, the stitching covered all the edges just fine. But on the tack down, I just felt like it hit it better with a one click um, um, enlargement on that. Just And you know, when you get into the scan and cut, it's got the little, it's the square with the little arrow and you touch it, little down arrow, you touch it. I just hit the plus sign one time and let it go there. And you wanna make sure your little lock is on so that it expands the whole thing and it doesn't distort it. You guys with scan and cuts, you know what I'm talking about. I will be using heat and bond on the back of all of my cut pieces. And I put my cut pieces on the scan and cut fabric side down with heat and bond on the back and heat and bond on top. And I know you don't have to do that. I know that. But I've got fusible on here and I want to cut the fusible at the same time. And if you cut it face up, you're going to pull your fusible off. You don't want to do that. Or you're going to leave paper on your mat and ruin your mat. So I put my fusible on, put it face down, mirror the object, and cut it fabric side down. That's how I do it. I know some of you purists out there, I hear from y'all. You're not supposed to do that. Whatever. That's me. Okay? It works. So I will be putting heat and bond on the back of all of my cut pieces. And you might notice I've got some alpha bitties on here. All I did with this was I took based on, where is it? So this was just to keep me straight, you guys. See how I have a J on here for these particular pieces? There's four pieces, two white and two blue, right? So all I did, that's just only because there's no reason, no rhyme or reason. I just grabbed the J out of my alpha bitties little jar container and then so like right here where I cut star block one star a it goes in section two I wrote SNCJ and then I put a little check mark next to each piece as I cut it so here's another SNCJ that's scan and cut J that's these two pieces are scan and cut J so I know that J and I marked my piece as J and so I've got B, I've got F, I've got no rhyme or reason. There's even a number or two in here. But at least I've, I've got it in my head that this is where it's at and what to do with it. And I will, once I put the back on them and I cut the pieces, then I will put those pieces into the baggie that they go in. There's a lot to get ready for this. So I did do a sample using the recommended fusible woven stabilizer on the back. And this is the one that was done with the three layers of no-show mesh. So they came out really pretty close to the same. Not too bad. This one has the background quilting on it. And the background quilting runs two lines, two rows. Um, it does two passes of an outer and an inner, uh, like a stabilizing stitch, I guess. I'm not entirely sure that I'm going to leave that on. I think I might 
take that off. And you can take that off and in brilliance, and I'll show you how. And the only reason being is, I think what I'm going to do instead is there is the ability to add a basting box in the utility menu in Embrilliance, Embrilliance Essentials. And so I will add a basting box to stabilize the fabric onto the stabilizer, but that will be trimmed off when we trim. Oh, speaking of trimming, you guys, y'all need to get these orange pop rulers, I tell you. They're not cheap. These are the handiest things that I have in my, in, in my sewing room. I'm telling you. It's so cool because a lot of this stuff that you have, like the pop bottle and the firefly stuff and the watermelon, the watermelon, not the watermelon, the lemonade pitcher, it's got stuff in the middle of it. Well, if you try to put a regular ruler on there, it's going to rock. Okay. Thank you, Marilyn. So it's nice that this has an opening and then you can trim up you guys I'll be honest with you the first time I saw these in the quilt store I was like eh, I don't know if I need those <laughs> and then I got some I would not make this quilt without them that's just me personal there are two sets there are squares and rectangles if you can only get one then I would do the square because you would use that more often in your quilting and you can always, you know, cut half and then move it up and cut the other half and make a rectangle, okay? That's just me. I love these things. Yeah, I mean, I cut this out easy peasy, just like this. Now, notice on my, on this, this is a sample, right? This is scrap fabric I use. I didn't do the little hearts. I didn't do the little watermelon seeds. I didn't need to do that. When you're making samples, do this squat down. <laughs> when you're making samples, you don't have to stitch out the entire block. What I was really interested in in the sample was the uh, pull compensation, the tugging that was going to occur around here and all this. Once we got to this part, the seeds and the little hearts are not going to make a difference on how it's going to stitch out because the outer stitching on everything has already occurred. So you don't have to do, when you do your tests, you don't have to do all of that you can use the needle plus minus or the thread plus minus and jump ahead in your embroidery machine to see how it's going to stitch out. Save yourself a lot of time. All right, so that's a lot to think about uh, to get ready for red, white, and blue. But the more prepared you are, the better informed you are, the uh, more fun you're going to have. It's going to be an easier experience for you. All right, you guys, that's it. That's all I had to talk to you about. We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.